Ta đi Ta đi Ta đi Ta đi Where's he got to? Oh dear Here we are Ta đi Wonder where he's gone to then Now, are we all set? What are you playing at? Well you told me to go hide No, I told you to go and get a hide Well how do I do that then? Well, fetch a hide. It's a tent thing for washing birds. Like binoculars? Yes, I do. But I need a hide for today's show. Oh. What's today's show about? Uh, it's all about watching birds and animals and things. Oh. Yes. I'm looking forward to today's show. Hey. Hey, do you know, with a bit of luck, we might even see Mother Nature in the raw. Oh, I better not look then. I like animals, I do. Me too. Hmm? Hey, animals run in my family, you know. Do they? Well, my great-grandad, he was a entomologist. Oh, he studied insects? No, hens. He was a entomologist. You had to give it up, though, because the wages were very poor. How poor? Chicken feed. Welcome to the show. Today's show is a bit special, for we're going to carry out our very... <laughs> we're going to carry out our very own nature watch and show you how to go about it yourselves. Then we'll be having a look at some of our stranger animals. And what better place to start? Hey. Than with a hide. Oh, I found the hide. Oh, where was it? Hid. Yeah, but you found it, right? No, I found it left, over by the scenery. Over here. Oh, let's have a look. Yeah. It's not a very good one, though, is it? No, it's not... What do you mean, not a very good one? I made it myself. It took me ages. I know, but it's too brightly coloured. The birds will see it. It'll scare them. Well, of course, you can see it here in the studio. Yeah. But you wouldn't be able to see it if it was over in the woods, would you? Of course not. Well, there you are, then. The woods are miles away, aren't they? Well, wasn't it Dr Desmond Morris that once said... Take two tablets every day and you'll be right as rain. He didn't say that at all. Well, all doctors say that at some time or other. Yeah, but Dr Desmond Morris is a doctor of zoology. Oh, zoology. I bet you don't even know what that means, do you? Of course I do. He looks after sick zoos. Yes, he looks after sick... He doesn't look after sick... When was the last time you saw a sick zoo? Well, it just goes to show how good a doctor he is, doesn't it? Nice one, Desmond. Well, the next thing, most essential, is to find the right place to put your hide. Now, most people have got no idea. We've an idea. We have, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> so we went out and about to investigate. Come on. Well, here's a prime example of what not to do. This hide is far too brightly coloured to spot any wildlife whatsoever. And this here's a dead giveaway. <laughs> I'll just see how they're getting on. How are you getting on? Get out of it. Well, unfortunately, they, they don't seem to have had any luck today. And quite frankly, I'm not surprised. Well, it's back to the studio. Amateurs. What is important to the nature watcher is identification. So we've set up a little demonstration to show you just how to go about spotting the difference between the animals you see. Over here. Hey, can I do this? No, you need to know something. You know nothing about this. Of course I do. Ah. I was instructed by one of the world's leading animal experts, Dr David Attenborough. Oh. Who also directed the film Mahatma Gandhi. No, 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 no. That was his brother Richard. Oh, sorry. Who also directed the film Mahatma Richard. Well, that's as maybe. But what we need is someone who's an expert in their field. Oh, that lets me out, then. Why? I haven't got a field. No, not that kind of field. Oh. Someone who knows what they're talking about with animals. Ah, oh. would I be right in thinking that someone was you? Of course not. <laughs> oh, it isn't you? Oh, yes, it is me. You'd be silly to think it wasn't me. Oh, that's silly me. Right, now that's sorted out, we'll take a look at the pictures. Ah, right. You can turn over. Right, OK. No, no, the pictures. Oh, sorry, the pictures. Right. Now, what is the first thing that leaps to mind when you talk about wild animals? Kangaroos. Kangaroo. Kangaroo. Not kangaroos. Indeed. The first thing that leaps to mind is the fox. And here we have a picture of the vixen and her cubs. Oh. As you can see, they are deer. They weren't. They were only ten a bunch in the jumble sale. Well, they should be foxes. Oh, I see. You made me look a right idiot now, haven't you? Didn't I do that? Yes, you did. 
Oh, he knows. Change the picture. Right. Now, another of our native animals is the weasel. Got it. The weasel on the easel. Good. Now, a lot of people have a problem in identifying the difference between a stoat and a weasel. Well, you can easily tell the difference between a stoat and a weasel because they're totally different. <sighs> I suppose they are, yes. Now, see how alert it looks. See the fit... That's the same picture as before, dear. Oh, you might be right, darling. <sighs> You've got all the same pictures, haven't you? I can't trust you to do anything. They're not all the same pictures. Oh, no? No, I've got one here of badgers. Well, let's have a look. There you are, look. They're not badgers. They're badgers. Oh, sorry, I thought you said badgers. <sighs> While we're sorting this little lot out, why not go over and watch Armchair Theatre? <sighs> let's have a look at that. Look. As I thought. What? I've got that one. Have you got any swaps? Well, I've got three of this UB40 here. Oh, I see. Oh, I might want. Ben Brady walked miserably by the stream. School was used to start tomorrow, but he just knew he'd never see Rolo again. A couple of weeks ago, he'd gone to the park to play football with his friends, and he tied Rolo's lead to a nearby park bench. When he came back, Rolo was missing, gone. It was about four years ago when they'd first met. Ben was six years old, and Rolo was just a little fat puppy. <laughs> she was one and a half weeks old and hadn't opened her eyes yet. But she was very alert, and somehow Ben knew that she was the dog for him. Now we'd never see her again. Flipping collar. Ben set off yet again, slowly around the park, looking for his dog and calling out her name. In fact, he'd done that for the last four weeks. At first, Ben thought that the dog running towards him was Rolo. It was a yellow Labrador, like Rolo, but it was wearing a collar. It was rather scruffy, though. Ben stroked the dog, and it wagged its tail. Hello, boy. Have you seen my Rolo, then? After a while, Ben set off again, whistling and shouting for his friend with the strange dog following him. It was about tea time when he decided to give up and head home, still without Rolo. He took one last look behind him and noticed the strange dog following him. He waited for it, then he knelt down to stroke it, whispering, Now then, fella, you can't come home with me. Let's see if we can find out where you live, then. He read the identity disc on the dog's collar. Major, 27 Woodlawn Avenue. The dog whimpered softly. Ben clipped Rolo's lead to its collar and decided to take it to Woodlawn. It was a big old house with a large lawn and two stone lions guarding the front door. Major barked and strained at the lead as they approached the gate. A fat old gentleman with a walking stick opened the gate and he was obviously delighted. And so was Major, who jumped up barking and wagging his tail. I'm Major! Where have you been, old boy? I bet you're hungry. I found him in the park, mister. He kept following me around. Ben unclipped the lead. The old man was overjoyed and shook Ben by the hand. Thank you, son. Thank you for finding my dog. I took him to the park about six weeks ago and let him off his lead. And he was chased by two great big dogs. I couldn't run after him because of my gammy leg. But I kept going back to the park to look for him. I thought he must have been run over by a car. Major ran on ahead of them into the garden and sprawled on the lawn, obviously delighted to be back home. The old man laughed. <laughs> Look at him back in his old place again. 
I've got another friend, you know, and she's a Labrador, just like Major. She followed me home. She must be a stray. She didn't even have a collar on. She's a nice dog, though. She's around there in the back garden. Would you like to see her? Ben couldn't wait. He dashed around to the side of the house with Major and the old man behind him. Fumbling madly with the latch on the gate, he finally managed to open it. The dog sped across the lawn, barking furiously with its tail wagging like a rudder. Major and the old man looked on in amazement as Ben buried his face in the soft yellow coat of his old friend. Hello, girl. Good old Rolo. I knew I'd find you. That was very nice. While you've been away, I sent my assistant out into the countryside to put up the hide. He should be miles away by now. <coughs> Back already? Yes. Have you done it? Not quite. What do you mean, not quite? I'm having a bit of a problem. Well, how far have you got? Not very far. Where's the hide? Just over here. Oh, no. Should have had it out there by now. I couldn't get it through the door. Well, I'll give you a hand. Will you? Go round the other end. Right. Round the end, right? Okay. Have you got it? Right, tip it back, that's yeah. it. Now, take it through. Go on. It take won't it through. go. It won't go. You should do it. I told you, I told you. Well, look, I tell you, come back, come back. Right. Right, now, turn it round. Turn round. Turn it round. We'll get it through. Okay. Don't you worry. See, easy to go through right. this door. Go on, turn it round. Hey. That's it. Go on, go on. OK. That should do it now. Go on. Right. Now, take it through now. OK. Take it through. There you are. You see? What did I tell you? It's stuck on the door. Well, keep pulling, keep okay. pulling. I'll get off. That's it. Go on. Pull hey, it. It's through. It's through. Yes, see, there's no messing, you Great. see? Dead easy. Yeah. Eh? Told it, now. Yeah. Right, get it taken to the hide. OK. Well, I do apologise about this, but we'll be with you in just a minute. Now, what did he do? Let me see, he sent the thing around here. Oh. What now? I've got another little problem. Problem? Well, it's a big problem, actually. Big problem? Yeah. What is it? There's a huge spider in the hall. Spider? Yeah. Well, you're not frightened of a little spider, are you? Yes. Uh, look, I'll sort it out for you. Okay. Go on. I'm right behind you. Hey. Go on. Go wait on. Don't me, worry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go on. Go on. Don't worry. Oh, well, it's all right. It's gone. Well, there you are. You see, I told you I'd get rid of it for you. Yeah. Now get that set up. Go on. Can you give us a hand? Oh, go on then. I've got nothing else to do. Right. Get all of it. Go on. Okay. Right. Got all this stuff. I've got it. Right now, take it round. Down the right stairs. The corner. Now be steady. Careful down the stairs. Steady then. Go on. Steady. Okay. Stairs. Steady then. Steady. 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 Now, as you can see, we've chosen our site and erected the hide. Now, when you're doing this, you must remember to be very, very quiet. Why is that? Well, it's so you don't scare the animals. Oh. Now, I suppose you're wondering why it's this colour. Because they run out of pink ones. Because they run out of... Not because they run out of pink ones. It's this colour so it blends into the countryside. Oh. Yeah, so it makes it invisible. Invisible? Yeah. Good. Now, one thing to remember when you erect your hide is to make sure the aperture is at the front. This is so you can put the camera through it. Of course it is. <laughs> there are. The camera is supposed to be on the inside with you. Oh, aye. Oh, aye. Oh. Uh, another thing to remember when you erect your hide is to keep it away from wasp nests. Back to the studio. <laughs> Back to the studio. Oh. Oh. Well, there's another tip for you. Never go anywhere without your insect repellent. I never go anywhere without mine. Oh, 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 and here he is now. What? Uh, I was just telling the viewers how concerned you are about the pollution on the environment. Am I? You are now. Oh. Now, tell me, what do you think about acid rain? Uh, I think I'd buy a glass umbrella. You've no idea, have you? Look, hey. just go away while I carry on with it. Oh. Now, as all of you probably know, conservationists oh. love all living things. Hey. And oh. all... Oh. Will you go away? I'm talking but to you. Just go away, please. Sorry about that. Oh. Now. Conservationists well, love them. Just go hey, away. Go away. But you've seen... You're me. interrupting. I do apologise. Conservationists love all living things and wouldn't harm anything that lives. Hey, Barry. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Did you see the size of it? I know. It was like a tarantula. I thought he played for Barcelona. No. Hey, hey it's over there. So it is. Let's go and capture it. I'll wait here. Right. I get it. I've got it. I've got it. I've... 
Oh, I missed it. Oh, you've let it get away now, haven't you? Did I? Sorry. <sighs> so you should be. Now, as I was saying, conservation. Now, we can all do our own little bit, but if some of you can't get out in the countryside, which I'm sure they are, why not bring a little bit of the countryside into your own backyard? We're talking, of course, about a bird table. A bird table? Yes, let's have the bird table. Certainly. One bird is one, two birds are two, three birds are three... Are four... you trying to be funny? No. Well, go and get the bird table. OK, it's over here. Good. Now, here on Chucklevision, we have our very own version of a bird table. Hey, it's a very nice bird table, isn't it? It is nice, isn't it? What about the bath? I had one this morning. No, not you. The bird bath. Oh, I couldn't get a bath, so I got a shower instead. Oh. There it is. Hey, it's a very nice shower, isn't it? Yeah. I even got a little towel as well, look. Very good. Yeah. Now, the McTuckle brothers have been out up in Scotland observing the greater crested fish eagle. Now, this is a very nervous bird and has been known to react very strangely when alarmed. Oh. Very nice, isn't it? It's very nice, isn't it? Oh, now we go over to our hide somewhere in the country. Hey, where shall I put the napkins? Just there, I think. All right. That's it, it's lovely, that. Just a minute. Oh, there's something missing. There we are, look. Hey, they're very nice, aren't they? Just finishes it off, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? You don't think it's a bit posh, do you? Not at all. They can get dressed up when they come in, can't they? Oh, you mean top hat and tails? No, no, just top hat. Why no tails? Well, they've already got tails, haven't they? Of course they have. Of course they have. Oh, now it's over to our Chuckle Vision hide to see if we can see any nocturnal animals. Come on. Oh, right. Come here. Right. We can get in now. OK. Don't forget to keep quiet. Right. Hey, it's good in here. Is it good? Yes. <laughs> That's it. Now, That's keep it. quiet. Keep dead still. Oh, right. Right. That's it. Won't be long. Something will come along soon. Well, we've been here all night, and I think you'll agree we've got some pretty remarkable shots. Don't you agree, Barry? Barry? Yes? I thought you'd agree. Oh. Now, as I was saying, a lot of animals are nocturnal, which means they only come out at night, which... Is why they're called nocturnal, because they keep knocking themselves out when they turn, because they can't see where they're going. Well, as I was saying, we've got some pretty remarkable shots, and here's one, first of all, that we took just after midnight of a fox and her cubs. Well, uh, as you can see, it was pretty dark at midnight last night, but if you look very closely, you can just about make out the nose of the fox. And the cub's behind. And the cub's be... Eh? You've got better eyesight than I have. I know I have. I can even see things that aren't there. You certainly can. Now, here's another one we took a little later on of some nocturnal prowler going about his business. You can just about make out the animal's eyes. Looks like a car's headlight. Does a bit, doesn't it? Mm. Now, here's another shot we took of the same animal just a couple of minutes later. <sighs> You can see he's turning a bit angry now. Looks like a car's tail light. It does a bit, yes. List. That sounds like the mating call of the lesser spotted what's it? Almost like a car's horn. It is a bit, isn't it? Uh well, that's all we've got time for this week. So we'll see you next week. Hey Paul, perhaps we could do a programme on island life. Hmm.